Welcome to our live training session number five, part four. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at our cold starting as well as setting up our anti-lag launch control. We're gonna have a lot to cover, so let's jump into the video so we can get started. Okay, so welcome to our day two here of tuning our turbo EM1 on Honda S300. Now, we're gonna be specifically taking a look at our cold starting. So in the previous day, we tuned all of the main fuel tables, so I tuned everything in my low and high cam and everything's gonna be dialed in correctly to that target air fuel that we wanted. Now we were using the closed loop control method, so we were looking at just our short term as the engine was running and we were dialing in our table here. So we know that our short term was as close to zero as possible, plus or minus 5% from the target of around 14.715 to one air fuel, and we know that the table has been properly calibrated. This is key to setting up our cold starting and our enrichment tables because if we don't have our main fuel table populated correctly and we're going and warming up and our table let's say is lean or it's rich, everything's gonna be skewed and we can't really get a good idea of what's going on with our fuel compensation. So we may need more or less fuel, but we can't judge as to what we need to enter into the table because we just haven't dialed in our fundamental main fuel table first. So now that we've done that, let's take a look at cold starting. So let's go over a couple things so we're very clear here of what to kind of look for and what to be aware of. Now, jumping in here to parameters, just so we're very clear, under fuel compensation, water temp compensation, open loop, closed loop. We set these tables all to the same values so that it was very easy to expose what was going on with the correction factor. Now, one thing I want to point out here is in the last video, I went in and I set up my closed loop lambda, and I specifically set it on my wideband input lambda target. Now we did this and I showed you how that worked and we even set our closed loop, closed loop up so it was running full time closed loop no matter where we were at or operating at. What I'm gonna do here is actually expand my short term adjustment trim to plus or minus 20. Now, um, if I'm gonna be going in and operating my vehicle after I've dialed everything in, um, even after this video, I'll put it back to plus or minus 10 if I'm gonna be using my closed loop at all points of operation, including full throttle. But when I wanna go ahead and dial in my, my closed loop uh, correction, feedback or my compensation tables here, um, I'm going to be making sure that I have a little bit more of a range of adjustment. So that if it tries to go in and take a whole bunch of fuel out, I'm going to allow it to do that. It's going to guide us in setting up these tables here as you're going to be finding out. Now the other thing that we did here that's significant because we set it on our wideband input lambda target, I went in here to my target lambda tables and I set my target air fuel to run in closed loop when the engine's cold around 13 air fuel. So if it goes and it's richer than that, it's going to go ahead and try to take some fuel out. We're going to be seeing that in our short term. It's going to be exposed really easily. So we know if it's pulling 10% out, we can jump here into our fuel compensation and we can go to that coolant temperature and just grab the range here, control J, take out 10%, um, and we can keep going through that process until we get our air fuel or our short term here as close to zero as possible when it's in the warm up. Now we can also see here, so it's very clear, um, from 68 degrees, we see it's 13 air fuel target. 